I'll call the meeting to order. Um, first item on the agenda is to um, review and discuss the minutes and approve them from February 22nd. Did everybody have a chance to read them? Yes. Yes. Uh, I move we accept the minutes as written. I'll second. second. I have a motion made and seconded by Tom. I'll do a roll call vote. Joyce? Aye. Tom? Yes. Susan? Yes. Betty? Yes. And myself? Yes. On to the next item is to review and discuss the cost of living adjustments for FY22. Um, I'll turn that over to Brian. Yep, so in the packet there was the updated CPI uh, table. <clears throat> that looks like that. Um, so that's updated for February 2021, um, at least for the um, New England division in the Northeast. Uh, Northeast was 1.2 and New England was 0 0.7. Um, Amy was able to gather some of the coal information from um, some of the surrounding towns, not too many. A lot of them are going through the process right now. Um, so I had those in the, <clears throat> I included those in the email that I had sent out. Um, Shelburne was two and a half. It looked like, um, looks like Ashfield was not giving one. Is that right, Amy? I think I had zero. Um, whoever it was, 1.3 tentative, Pelham 1.5, Furcog was two and a half. Um, Lynn's on the finance committee there, but she said that some of that, that some of that increase was a result of them doing um, an assessment for their wages against similar RPAs in the, in the, in the state. Um, so I think there was some, there's a, a built-in increase there to try to address that. Um, Social Security, well, like we talked about, that's 1.3%. And for Frontier Teachers Contract, it's 2.0. And according to the budget documents we got from the elementary school, um, that's also a 2.0 increase. Um, Joyce, that, is that contract signed? Do you recall? With the elementary? Yes, yeah. we got the contract signed. Okay. It took a pandemic, but we got the contract signed. Does 2.0 sound right? Because that's what that Shelly had said. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's that's the information that we have on that. Anybody have any opinions or comments? If we don't, if we don't do two percent, well, you know, if the teachers got two percent, then everybody else has to have two percent, right? Or there'll be a lot of squawking. <laughs> so last year, I think the teachers got two percent, and I think we did a little higher, didn't we? No, I don't think so. I think it was two percent. Yeah, I know um, we haven't. So we we have in the maybe it wasn't last year, maybe it was the year before, but I'm remembering a year where we did like two or or two point two five or something, and the teachers were locked into their contract at two. So, I think um, I, I kind of I agree with the spirit there that people will feel, um, you know, they'll they'll feel badly perhaps, but. Uh, um, I don't think it always is the case that we go with whatever the teachers get. So I, I have the listing here. Um, so FY 18 was two and a half. This is for, this is for town. Um, FY 19 was, uh, 2.25 FY 20 was two and a half and FY 21 was two. And I, I don't remember what the, what the previous teacher's contract was. Mm -hmm. Wasn't it a one, two, two or a two, one, one or. Right. Yeah. Those, uh, those sound right for the last few years, at least um, that I've been on committees that had been around there. Do we know what the financial impact is for every percentage point? 
No, but I'm guessing that 2% is going to mean about 15,000 overall, Brian. Is that? Yeah, I, I don't, I didn't print that out. Um, but yeah, that's, that sounds about right. In that ballpark. Okay. So you have, Brian, do you have that data from last year? Yeah. I was going to see if I have it on the, on this computer. It'll be It'll pretty be close. close. Yeah. Yeah, give me a second to look. I mean, at this point in time, no matter what we do, we our recommendation goes to the to the finance committee, and then they take it from there. Mm -hmm. If 2% is around 15,000, that means half percent is 3,750. So, you know, for, for example, if we are debating 1.5 versus two, is it worth 3,750 to keep the peace? Yes. I agree with Tom. Do we want to wait for Brian to get the information? Or yeah. Do we... Okay. Yeah. I think it would be easy to find, huh? Did we meet before? Did we meet in person before the pandemic started? I think we met in person at least once. Mm -hmm. That's my recollection too. I have a copy of it from FY20. I just pulled yep. out of my folder. Um, I'm trying to think, you know, at that, in FY19, the total salaries was 659,160. 2% uh, was, that's kind of, it says 2% was 9,887. I'm not following your the chart though. Um, it has three percent at nineteen thousand seven seventy four. So, guess that makes sense. But I don't have anything from FY twenty one, Brian. Yeah, I can't. What, Brian. I, yep. may, I may have that. I got to go downstairs and to, I think I saw it the other day looking through stuff. So, all right. <laughs> Who can find it first? Who can find it first? Come on, Ziggy. We got to go. Come on. Come on, let's go. Go hungry. Put it in. Come on. Come on. 
you gotta go. Right. She's under my feet. Come here. Come on. <laughs> Lily, you're not missing anything. Okay, I found something here for fiscal 19 salaries. 2% was 13,183. One and a half was 9,887, so. Oh, okay, all right. I have that same form. Okay, got the same form, okay. Finally. So this is based on FY20 numbers, uh, FY20 salary numbers. Yeah. FY20, okay. So like Susan said, uh, a half a percent equals, you know, somewhere in the $3,000 range. I make a motion we go with the two percent. <clears throat> okay, I have a motion made for two percent. Second that. Motion made and seconded. Any other discussion? And I'll bring it to a vote. I'll do a roll call. Joyce? Aye. Tom? Aye. Susan? Aye. Betty? Aye. And myself, I. So it's a unanimous. Okay, moving on to the next item. Um, review and discuss salary survey information and requests since the last meeting. And probably since we have Fred and Cynthia here, let's start with them. Do you want, Brian, do you want to say anything first or do you want Fred and Cynthia to? Um, well, you all should have received the, the request that, that Fred and Cynthia submitted. Um, and I think we'll, we'll just let them talk to the committee about it. Okay. okay. Uh, I'm, I'm here today as the uh, chair of the Board of Assessors. And I prepared a... Uh, uh, Table showing salaries of of assessors with similar positions and and years experience uh, in Franklin County compared to what our ass assistant assessor here, Cynthia Herbert, has. Uh, she's kind of she started this effort with comparing with other other Franklin County towns, and I joined in to to help and to present some kind of uh, rationale of, of why the salary increase for Cynthia should be comparable with other towns in Franklin County. Now, I know you do a survey of, you've got 10 towns, uh, not all in Franklin County, uh, looking at information. Uh, I don't think it really represents a or to me useful as a comparison for Cynthia to other people in town, in other surrounding towns, uh, based kind of uh, comparing kind of similar size towns. Uh, I think Brian, you sent the, the analysis I put together to everybody. Yeah, I can share that if you want. The spreadsheet, I don't, I didn't get what packet you sent, but uh, anyway, I, I looked at other than, other than maybe size of town, and by that, I excluded on Greenfield, Deerfield, maybe Northfield is a different size. We realize they have more work and do things a little differently. So I looked at similar towns, similar size towns based on what the assessors actually do, some of the work the assessors do. And the two columns here that show what the assessors are involved in, a lot of their time is is dealing with a number of parcels, the assessed value on every parcel in town, and also the number of housing units, which is more detailed description, more involved work. Uh, 
I started here with these these towns, like I said, that were similar similar size, and you can see the the salaries here that came from the FERCOG study they recently sent us for for 2021, and I got the number of parcels and housing units from the FERCOG. And you can see the average there, either without Deerfield Montague or without Conway. Uh, I guess I was surprised that they come so close to what Waitley does. So you look in the red line, Waitley's number of households and units is very similar to what these other, what, eight or 10 towns that I show in this chart have. I guess it just happened to come out that way. I didn't look to get uh, 1,214 as an average, but uh, so I think we're similar to these other towns in Franklin County. Uh, I took out, well, you can see the, the salary range from low to high in, in Franklin County. Uh, I took out the Deerfield Montague because they're much bigger, uh, have more work. They have assistance with them, assistance assessors, and, and excluded Conway because you excluded Conway in your analysis. Well, you excluded the highest one in your analysis. I think the highest, highest uh, price in your analysis. So I figured, okay, I'll exclude Conway because they were the highest in, in, in the table here. So you can see without Conway, uh, in there, the, the average hourly of these assessors here is, is $26.55. And, oh, and the other thing I looked at to, to put this table together was similar positions. If you notice, these are all assistant assessor or they call them director of assessor, administrative assistant, whatever. It, it's similar to the position that Cynthia has, her title which is different than as you look further down on the chart, a lot of them are called clerks. There's a difference in a position description. Uh, to be a, more than a clerk, you have to, you have to uh, take training classes by DOR uh, beyond the minimum requirements and every two or three years take additional classes, which Cynthia has been doing. Uh, and the other thing I, I looked at to group the, the similar assessors on the top of the top of the chart here is by uh, longevity. All of these on the top of you, you can see uh, what their salaries are. Many of them have uh, been assessors since since uh, 2000, early 2000, uh, and, but. Nobody has been longer than Cynthia. Cynthia is the longest assessor uh, in Franklin County County today. That's what my analysis shows. I may be off, maybe somebody else sits longer, but we don't see that. Uh, Cynthia knows all these, most of these people, so she can vouch that she's the oldest, or not the oldest, the longest uh, employed assessor in Franklin County. So I guess I feel that she should be listed or she should be considered with these other uh, 10 assessors that have about as much experience as Cynthia does. You can see the range in the, in the years hired from 2001, summer 1999, Cynthia is 1993. So uh, that was one th another thing I looked at and how to group these towns. That, and then, then I just added the last thing is a percent increase that these towns have received. I think the, the top of the chart shows what, five years or six years, Brian? The increase in what, 15 to 16? 15 to 2015 to 2000, okay, 21. Again, from the FERCOG survey. Uh, what I could gather, just taking a strict percentage you can see these range anywhere from 24 to 97. Two of them are missing because they didn't make sense. Uh, the numbers were weird. Uh, again, I took out the highest ones, the three high, shows it's uh, anywhere from a 35 to 43% increase that these similar size assessors got uh, in Franklin County. 
Whaley's assessor only got 17% during this time period. Uh, and that is mostly reflected in cost of living. The salary position for Cynthia has, has never been increased other than cost of living. For the 28 years she's been employed by the town of Whaley, she's been accepting the cost of living and nothing else. And I guess what I'm proposing now is that we, we increase her salary to something that's representative of her experience uh, and, and her workload compared to others in Franklin County. And that's where I come up with the, the $26.50 should be her salary. Uh, right now it's being recommended for what, 22, well right now it's 22.82, it's her current salary. So looking to increase that to 26.50. Based on, you can see the average salary for these other, other towns and also based some on the on a percent increase in salary these other towns have received as well. So that works out to, you can see the 35.7% is the average. Uh, other assessors have gotten this last uh, seven years. You take that um, Cynthia's salary she had in 2015, which was $19.50, you come up with roughly $26.46. So if you want to be comparable with the other towns, that's what her salary should be. So I guess I'm proposing that uh, the, board of, the Board of Assessors increase her salary to $26.50. And I guess I, as part of how the Whateley operates, we, we rely on recommendations, I guess, from personnel committee that go to uh, finance and select board. So. I guess I'm here today to uh, ask for your recommendation on this. Uh, I'll, I'll uh, before you, I guess you have a chance to respond. I guess I'd like to ask. Uh, I think Cynthia is still with, still on here. Cynthia, did you want to say any more? I don't know. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. I'm not, never sure how these things work. You did an excellent job, Fred. I really can't think of anything else that would need to be said. I think you you covered it very, very clearly, very succinctly. Okay. Um, then I guess I'll, you know, I'll start in. One of the comments, just to, as a point of clarification to Fred, in case you weren't aware of it, um, one of the things that Waitley does not really I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but Waitley doesn't really consider your years of experience with our positions. Um, you know, I, I feel it should be, but we've never been in the position where we say, well, geez, so-and-so has been with us for 30 or 40 years, and that doesn't necessarily put us to the top of the line there, but definitely made very valid points in other areas. Um, and I think you've done your homework there. I'll open the floor to the rest of the committee. Anybody else have any comments? Joyce? Uh, I guess another uh, point of clarification is um, we did a lot of work on which towns we compare to. And it's not just a matter of how many parcels they have or, or things like that. It's about their tax base. It's about their population. Um, there were about uh, nine or 10 um, factors that we looked at um, for when we picked the comparison towns. So I don't, um, I, and I think some of the ones you include here, a lot of Franklin County towns um, just weren't very uh, comparable to Waitley. So we don't generally use those towns. And so our, our list is actually quite considered. Um, the, the next part, I, I don't, and, and, and you, you mentioned about what people call a job. Um, I, I don't, I don't feel like I have any idea what the director of assessing in Montague maybe does um, a lot of things that maybe you have to farm out to consultants. Um, I also know that I, and this is, I, I don't really know how to say this in a, in a nice way, 
but sometimes people don't always feel like they get a fair shake with the assessors. Um, I know at least one person who's gone in and asked for help to figure out why is this being assessed at this rate by the state and where was something was like off by, you know, they were assessing it at a value that was like 50% higher than the cost of the item. Um, and they were just kind of told to, sorry, you know, we can't help. <laughs> so, you know, they, to me, um, like, I don't know with all these other comparisons that you're making, if those people actually, uh, maybe they have better knowledge. Maybe they have, um, I mean, maybe they have other skills that they bring to the job. Um, it's really hard for me to tell from the list. And so th to me, those are two things that I say, that I would say kind of lead me to um, question the comparison. You're saying, well, don't, don't compare to these other towns that you've been comparing to for every other position on our list compared to these other towns that pay more. And I'm not convinced you've made the case that these are the towns we should be comparing to. Well, let, let me just respond. I, I looked at your- I would just like to- Your, your analysis that you did, uh, some of the data on your comparison is not correct. Uh, and, and so you're, and you're only down to three or four towns, really, that, that, that are usable data for comparison. Uh, the the so 2650, are, wait a minute. Yeah. The 2650, so which towns are wrong, you say? On no, our, um, let me, the 2650 we're proposing is not the highest on this chart. You can look, it, it's in the middle or maybe below the middle. There's others I realize that are higher. They do things differently, but look at the number of parcels. Look at the workload. That's what we're looking at. Not the, not the tax base, the, the, the uh, property values. That's kind of all related to, to the workload. Uh, the, the towns you picked out for your analysis, uh, I realize I understand how you picked them, but I don't think it applies to every every position. Mm. It should be evaluated the same way. You know, there's Can you tell me which towns in our analysis are wrong? There's footnotes like, on the bottom of, of your table to explain some of the differences. Well, I guess I could have done the same thing with, with the assessor's position as well. No, I'm just wondering, you said that some of the, um, in our yes. list, some of the data was wrong. Can you yes. tell me? Which ones? Okay, Shelburne. Start with Shelburne should be 2280. Like I'm showing here, I don't know where you got that number. Your okay. number was an older one. Uh, I can re Fred, I can respond to that one. Um, we, I, I picked up on that also, and I asked um, Amy to, to get more information. So we found out that um, Former assistant assessor left the position and her replacement was hired at a lesser rate. So even though it was listed at 2280, the current person that is now doing the job is at 1925. So that is accurate. Okay. Well, I I I won't dispute that if you say you did that. Okay. And the other one that's that. And I uh, just and I just. Away. Oh God! Well, Conway is—you've got there's two people in Conway involved. You picked a lower one, and uh, rather than a higher one, and I even excluded the higher one because uh, it's not representative of everybody else for their size town. So uh, the the 1539 for Conway is, shouldn't be used for comparisons, and nor nor should the 3438 for Conway. So so you're you're three four. What are you up to? Well, five or six, and I, I don't know outside of Franklin County what what the numbers are. Okay, I think was Cynthia, were you gonna say something? I was. I was going to just go back to an earlier point that Joyce made. She made a town resident had been brushed off even though an assessment was higher. I do believe she was referring to a motor vehicle bill. And in fact, there is nothing we can do about values set by the state. And the person who made this complaint was given the phone number to call. It cannot be, it cannot be started at the assessor's office. It is up 
to the owner of the car. So, and that's what I believe that was being in reference to. I am never impolite or short with anybody in town that very firmly. Another thing I, I feel to, to make the comparison going back to the town of Shelburne, just because they hired a new person, we probably should consider the other rate at 2280 into our calculations if we're going to stick with what we have and see what, because I'm making the assumption that probably within a year or two, Shelburne will bump that person up. Well, probably, and you're, and you're comparing a new hire versus yes many other positions that have a lot more experience. I, I agree, but like I said in a minute ago, that's the one disadvantage to, in my opinion, the way Waitley does things is we don't really consider how long some of our employees work because if we're going to start facing the years of, you know, that they're working, we have a lot of other employees that have worked many years also, and that really doesn't come into a factor when we look at the other towns that we compare to, it's just unfortunate. But but that information is is available. At, well, I've seen at Franklin County. I don't know the other towns you got from uh, Hampshire County, whether that's available or not. It, you don't. It's hard to tell how long these people have been in that position with, for your other towns. So. I guess I just thought I'd use some some fairly reasonable data that FERCOG has been putting together for years, and I, I guess it has some, uh, to me, has some merit, and I think it, different positions maybe should look at differently. Uh, Does anybody else have any comments? Um, does anybody want to make a recommendation at this point? I figured this right, Brian. It's going to, I just did, looked at the assessor's budget and, uh, you know, 18 and a half hours times 2650, the salary position will go up about $2,800 from 22737 to 25493. So, okay. The the thing that's let me just address that briefly. The thing that's happening with with the assessors, uh, not only in our our community but others, is is the the uh, activities that the assessors do, and by that I mean what what we do in Whaley. We go out every year, as many of you know, to look at, at, at properties, look at houses, uh, go inside, look at the condition of the property, look at improvements that are being made. We've been doing that to about 10% of the properties every year. So we're on about a 10 year cycle to, to do that. Many other communities don't do that. They look at building permits, which we do too, but we at least know where to go with a building permit to look. Uh, they look at building permits or they look sales records and they could get the value from that. We don't, we go beyond that. We actually go and visit to see because there is differences in the quality of construction, type of construction, materials used, that kind of stuff. Uh, we haven't gone out last year to do that because we're not going to go and decide the people's houses. <laughs> they wouldn't and, let you in anyway, Fred. Right. And it's not the th three or four of us also trying to be together to do that activity. So we probably won't be doing that as much this year. So, you know, one option that we haven't decided with Cynthia yet is, is to reduce her number of hours from what, 18 and a half to maybe 16 hours. Uh, that would still keep her within the budget if, if we did that. Because when we go out to look at properties, we, we go from like six, six to eight o'clock, at least two hours uh, evening. And we do that probably from May through September. Uh, and it takes her in about an hour, say before 
Before we do that, to do mailings, get paperwork, get everything together, and then another hour after we're done to discuss it and figure out the correct value. So that's four hours a week for so many hours. So, you know, we're considering reducing her hours some to, to, to compensate for that because we're not going out. Or we don't plan on going out right now unless somebody tells us we still need to do that. Somebody want to make, I a, make motion? a motion. We go with the 25, whatever it is, or 26, 22, whatever the number is. I don't see it in front of me now, but 26, 46, is that the number? I think he said 26, 50, but I'm not sure. Well, depending on which one, it's, it's either 26, 46 or 26, 55. <laughs> Whichever one you want to pick. Whichever one, I, you know. There we go. 2650. I make a motion. We raise the salary of the assistant assessor to 2650. I second it. Okay, I have a motion made and seconded. Any other discussion? The only other thing that I wanted to say was to the point that hours are being cut back because it's impossible to do the home visits right now. Um, in 2022, hopefully you'll be able to resume, you know, all sorts of activities will resume, at which point would it necessitate making the hours go back up again? Uh, can I address that issue? Sure. Please. Sure. Uh, I actually think that 16 or 16 ha and, and a half hours each week is is sufficient to do the work, even if we do do, you know, return. I think if we go back to going into houses, we will we will try to do late afternoon visits rather than into the evening. Um, all three assessors are basically not tied to jobs, even post pandemic. And so uh, we could, for example, go out at four and, and uh, inspect houses until six or something like that. So I think 16 or 16 and a half hours a week is, is sufficient for the job. That's assuming that the homeowners are also available at four, if the homeowners- They generally have been when I have, <laughs> have called. Okay. okay. Is there any other discussion on the motion on the floor? If not, I'll do a roll call vote and I'll start with Joyce. Um, no. Susan. Can you come back to me? I'm still processing. Okay. Betty? Yes. Tom? Aye. And I will vote yes and I'll come back to Susan. Aye. Okay, we have four yeses and one no. So the motion <clears throat> carries. All right, thank you for attending. Thank okay, for I'm listening. going to uh, I'm going to to uh, leave the meeting. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, Fred. Okay, you're welcome. I'm okay. also going to depart the meeting as well. So again, thank you, Keith, and your your board for all your time. Uh, considering this, we appreciate it. So, yes, I appreciate it also. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, next item up on the agenda, I guess, another salary request to be looked at is myself. Um, <laughs> as I had told Brian, I feel very, you know, awkward in regards to being on the personnel committee and also as you know the chair and wanting to have my position looked at a little closer um so keith keith maybe we should have somebody else ch chair the meeting for this part okay <laughs> any volunteers i nominate brian no, i'm not <laughs> on the committee <clears throat> um uh i could uh i could chair for this part that means I have to re-pull up the agenda, which I, it's uh, somewhere on this. Uh, <laughs> I'm using the small screen today. Um, uh, okay, so we are on, still on item three, 
Um, we have one um, salary adjustment to, um, to consider. Um, and the person involved sent us all something to read, which I assume everybody has read because everybody is so good about doing their homework. Um, but uh, just like the last one, uh, Fred uh, spoke about the kind of the reasons behind things. I think maybe that's a good idea to let um, uh, to let Keith uh, kind of make the case, and then people can ask questions. Does that sound like a reasonable way to proceed? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, um, Keith, go ahead. All right. Um, so I'm assuming, like Joyce said, every, did everybody have a chance to write? What I wrote. Yes. I mean, read, right? Read it. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I can quickly review, go over what I had written to the personnel committee and the select board, and that is, you know, the, the fact that, at the time, my position, the current position I held, which is the highway superintendent slash building superintendent, it was created two years ago, and at the time. In going back to FY19, my annual salary at that point in time, looking at it just comparing to other highway superintendents, was $26 difference between the median and Waitley. So nobody can argue that that was right in line of where it should be. And it wasn't out of, out of whack at all. So as things have gone on in FY20, when the position was added, a, a, a number that and we came up with at the time and everybody agreed on was to add four thousand five hundred dollars to the salary to reflect the added responsibilities. At that point in time, it made the position the highest salary amongst all other highway superintendents being compared. What it's ne neglected to do is to look at the fact that the other highway superintendents that are being compared don't have that responsibility. So in FY20, it put the position at 6.9% above the median. And then subsequently last year is at 5.68. And the point I'm trying to make is that that percentage will continue to drop yearly because no other highway superintendents are, have that responsibility in, as highway superintendents. That kind of responsibility is something that's more in line with a Department of Public Works and, and a Director of Public Works. However, you know, as we have all understand and just we're talking a little bit about this previously, certainly can't compare Waitley to, um, to like Greenfield and Montague because it's, they're not compatible. Um, even even Hatfield DPW director is at one hundred and five thousand um, dollars. Deerfield is a little closer at eighty six thousand, but Deerfield high Deer Deerfield also has the responsibility of sewer along with the building superintendent position. Cemeteries also and cemeteries, correct. So so again, Deerfield is not a fair comparison either, but certainly um, another thing that may be a little bit more aligned is Deerfield is um, going forward this year with an assistant DPW director that's, and they're advertising that at 74,000. Um, so again, just a few other things that I wanted to go over, you know, in recent years, um, it seems like my position has been more of the uh, the go-to guide, so to speak, for a lot of other departments. You know, I'm having to, to be responsible in regards to the water merger project. Um, I had to get involved um, with the Hurley Park, the softball field, to oversee that um, and monitor the contract of that down there. I'm gonna, I've had to deal with already the Waitley Woods project. That's gonna be upcoming this year. I've got to work on that. Um, the Veterans Memorial, and even as more like the building superintendent stuff, the this past winter, town hall has had numerous issues with the heating system and it required me along with Neil who volunteers his time to, to be in there many hours on the, you know, time on the weekends 
and off and you know outside of my normal hours just to make sure that that building wasn't freezing up because we were having problems and the building was in the 40 40 degree range so um the other things that you know as the building superintendent you know i'm having to to, to deal with other departments had to oversee the the, the fire station siding project um the elementary school i've had to spend time calculating and getting the uh, estimates and do the bidding for their for their driveway parking lot resurfacing um so there's it just seems like lately in the last few years my position is being a lot more than than what it used to be so to speak as a highway superintendent only And so the other, you know, the, the one suggestion I had is, is to go back to, you know, FY20 when the position was changed and it was at that point in time, it was like 7% above the average. And, and that may be one way we could potentially look at it. Another thing that I also found in on the FERCOG salary survey is the town of Leverett as a facilities manager, it's a part-time position that pays $9,524 a year. Um, but again, I feel awkward in this, in the aspect, but I feel that if I don't, if I don't raise the question in a few years, I look at it that the position will continue to go down closer to the median and it will get to the point where the position is not being funded anymore. Okay, now I can talk, right? Yes, uh, Tommy, go ahead. Uh, I'm looking at my 2022 budget book. And for winter roads, the superintendent gets paid 24806 And for regular roads, regular rest of the year, it's 46 867 that comes up to 71 673 is that correct keith yes that's how that i believe that sounds right now the the memo that i have here that you sent to the personnel committee and the selectmen the last paragraph says the current median is 676 adding 6.9 or 46 24 40 is a salary of 72,264. That's less than a thousand dollars than what you're getting now. Uh, I, I, I understand that. The point that I'm just wanting to make is that because I have that additional responsibilities, I don't feel that I should be being compared to the average median, which is 67,600 because those, those people that we're comparing to do not have that responsibility. But you can't compare yourself to Hatfield or Deerfield. I, I, I understand that. And it's a, it's a hybrid position that we created. I That's mean, right. it, it's a point in time. It's like, what, what is the advantage for me to to take that position as the building superintendent, go back the way it was and, and we would, then I would be being compared to the 60,000, Yeah. And I would still be, you know, that's the point I'm making. I realize right now it's not a huge deficit. No, and but, then, and on now not, not to, to, to really muddy the waters, but on top of this, 71,673, you're going to get 2% increase. That's 14,33. That gets you up to 73,106, which is over what you're already asking for. Well, the, but the also the other thing is that 67,600 does not have any colas in it either. I don't know what the answer to this is, but. Okay. Uh, Susan's wants to, to say something. Oh, yeah. It sounds to me that there are two parts to this issue. One is the dollar amount, but the other is the position definition, because as long as the position is defined as highway superintendent and we're comparing to other highway superintendents, 
we're going to repeatedly have this problem. Is it an issue to redefine the position, whether it's as you know, DPW or some other position that is more consistent with the current responsibilities? Uh, I mean, if you're talking uh, traditional DPW, that would be that would be an inorganizational change that would that the town would make. Yeah. Typically, Not you would have a that. Department of Public Works, and underneath that would be um, highways, building, cemeteries, parks and rec, um, which which isn't how Waitley's currently water, set up. Every, well, water. Um, uh, I'm not saying that that's not a an avenue that the town should explore. I'm just saying it's not a quick. Mm -hmm. it, it's not a quick change. But is there some other position? I you know, forgive me. I'm not as familiar as some of you. Some other title that can be used to get us out of the issue of comparing to other highway superintendents with different responsibilities? Not that I know of, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that kind of hits the, the, the problem is we don't have great um, things for comparison because most small towns find the best solution they can with, you know, spit and duct tape and <laughs> you know, and keeping the, the, the budgets under control. Make so um, our position is kind of unique, but so is Hatfields is kind of unique and Deerfield is kind of unique. And um, so uh, I guess one question I was going to ask is if this um, salary increase were to be granted, does that mean the, the you no longer do winter roads? Or is that? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I didn't ask you, Tommy. So, okay. so I mean, so I so my get so my, then my question might be, um, why don't we count what you make on winter roads as part of your salary? Because I think that's a big part of your job. It's in there, it, it and it, it, we do. It, but I thought you you had said something, and then you add on top of that the winter road. So maybe I heard that wrong. It, it sounded like um, like salary was one thing, and winter roads were were like a, a bonus or something. That's okay. not okay. Sorry, I heard that wrong. There's, then. there's two parts to the highway department budget. There's winter roads, which is, and I don't even know. We started doing this year, fifty years ago. There's winter roads because, and the reason we do it this way, we is can overspend, we, right? We can overspend, and then we can get it back. Then there's just regular highway department. Mm -hmm. Regular okay, so the salary is just split between those two categories, right? That's it's not that his salary changes depending no. on what gets spent in which. Okay, thank you because that was kind of confusing. It made it uh, it made it sound like there were. Sorry, uh, you want to give up winter roads, Keith, and just do regular highway and building and maintenance? Right. Yeah. So no, I mean people. This is going on the air. There's probably people as ignorant as myself out there. Oh no, and I'm not... they'll they'll maybe now understand a little better because uh, I asked a stupid question, <laughs> and now we're all better informed for that. So to clarify it a little bit more for you, Joyce, eighteen weeks of the salary, uh, eighteen weeks, basically mm -hmm. from December first to April first. Mm -hmm. We all of our payroll comes out of Winter Road. Okay. For all all of our being highway department. department. And then yeah. the other 34 weeks of the year comes out of highway salary. So okay. to get a true picture of everybody's expense, you have to look at the two different sections that and that was what Tom was making reference to. Okay. Okay. Understood now. Okay. All right, Betty, we've been waiting for you to hear from you next. I've been listening to you, Joyce. No, I, I know Keith works hard in all positions. I don't think we have a clear understanding with a lot of people what their positions are. Is everything written down on all that we look at? I think that's one thing we have to do. Don't we have to look at each person separate mm. at some point? Mm. Yeah, and that there's things, I mean, what one of the things I'm very sympathetic to is Whenever something weird comes up that was like, Ooh, we need somebody to go over to Hurley and do such and such, um, or we need somebody, you know, there, there's a lot of things that Keith just picks up and, and does because he's got the skills and the people to help do it when he needs help. And 
Um, so that's something I really appreciate that probably would not be in a job description. Um, and so I kind of feel I, so in that sense, I'm actually pretty sympathetic. Um, but I agree with Susan also, it's really hard to find something that's, that's comparable. So I don't know if we have enough information to figure out what, um, the salary base should be here. I mean, it's made a case that it should be, uh, going up maybe a little bit more than it has, um, but I like. I wonder what would be some good data. I mean, what 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 better data could we try to get between now and then? And which really means, Keith, you get between now and our next meeting to to kind of um, help us have a better basis because this is going to go before the finance committee. And and you know, Tommy's the nicest person on the finance committee. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the rest of them are going to be really mean. So, so we don't want to go in there like with no data to back it up. I mean, we can't just go in there and say, Keith is so sweet. Uh, and he, and he does lots of nice stuff for us. Uh, they will, yeah, they will, they will, they'll be really, I mean, and, and that's their job. So I'm not, I'm not trying to make fun of them very much. Um, what would, just, what just would happen time. if we took the, and I, again, I didn't go back and like make this calculation, but if, we went back to the time that it was created. It was mm -hmm. a, an added forty five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. If that number is kept separate from the comparison, mm -hmm. and, and maybe just do cost of living adjustments on that forty five hundred, and then it then at least my comparison to the other mm -hmm. highway superintendents. <laughs> Mm. It is a fair comparison, That's, but and so I don't know what that'll do as I we see. go forward. But does that make sense? So can I re, can I restate it to see if I understand it? Um, like basically divide your salary into two parts. One is the highway superintendent, and one is the building superintendent. And the building and superintendent is a 2018 four thousand five hundred dollar bonus and um, let the highway superintendent portion, which we do have more reasonable comparisons for, um, let that be the basis for a comparison on that base. And then the be that base plus 4,518 or 2019 dollars. Did any of that make any sense to anybody? Yeah. I, I understood that and I like that solution. Again, I, I the point I'm I'm not trying to say that it's that is a huge discrepancy now, but it mm -hmm. but the way the, the way it is going, it will continue to get worse every year. Mm -hmm. And uh, at some point in time, the again I went from being average to the highest. And then <laughs> every year I'm gonna go back down to average and then when i hit average again i'm not going to be being compensated for the building superintendent position at that time i understand that yeah. when we created the building superintendent position didn't we come up with a it might have been kind of vague but we had some kind of a job description didn't we I think we added something to the existing job description. Yeah. Okay. It's because a couple of comments or a couple of things I thought of was, you know, you said you got involved in the uh, estimating of the driveway work at the elementary school. Isn't Waitley Elementary part of Frontier and they have a facilities manager who's supposed to do that kind of stuff? Number one. Number two is you get involved in all the water department stuff, but there is, and that's an enterprise fund. They're a separate, basically a separate ent entity from the town of Waitley. If they're going to cross the road by the center school, yeah, you got to get involved. But as far as anything else that they do, you really shouldn't get involved. So are you make, is it becoming more difficult because you make it more difficult or is that just the way it's working out? Same well, thing I mean, at Hurley. I mean. Yeah, I, again, going back to Hurley, it's the, the select board. Asked you. 
to do it. And if, and if yeah. I don't, someone, when they hired the contractor, someone has to be down there making sure that that contractor did their work. And, yeah. someone ha and because the town did not have enough money to do it all by the uh, by contract outside contractor they then look at me and say we need you to make up the difference yeah and like with the waitley woods project that hasn't even really started but i'm going to be rebuilding the culvert and it's on well it's semi-private property i mean at the moment it's private property but they the way the select board has looked at it and jonathan has said to me is that it's for the benefit of the town of waitley for the betterment and that's why they get involved and put that kind of responsibility on me and on you but but they shouldn't be doing that you, technically you shouldn't be doing that work <laughs> it's that you're working on private property well <laughs> yes no yes i understand that but that's where the select board mm -hmm. look at yep. things and say it's have told me it was for the betterment of the community and you know, when it get back to the to the frontier stuff, I, I talked to Brian in regards to having to to do the bidding, and because it's technically the town of Waitley, um, I put it in part. Of, I had to submit the estimate in as our Franklin Regional Council bids for Blacktop this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so that's how I had to get involved in the estimate for that. Yeah. I also think that. You know, I mean, Waitley Woods is going to be an, an asset for our, our town, and we want to make that happen if we can. Granted, it's private property now, but soon it will just be in a, um, a, a trust. And I think sometimes, I mean, there's some value in people willing to go a little bit outside their job to make sure that something doesn't get screwed up. Right? Uh, money, uh, Joyce. Pardon? It costs money. It costs money, but then, I mean, mistakes also uh, cost money. You know, and, and, you know, making sure the blacktop gets done right or the thing at Hurley he gets done right is that there's value there. So if it costs money and you're getting some value out of it, I just want to say there's value there is what I'm thinking. I feel like there's some value there that is maybe less tangible, but it's, I think there is some value. I'm, I'm only gonna say one more thing. And that is that when, the, when this, I saw this, I was dead set against it. Because, you know, because I look at the numbers, but now it all comes out that he has all this additional responsibility as far as the, like the, on the building and, buildings and maintenance end of it you know maybe we should separate out the highway superintendent he, there's going to be two different i don't know how you get do you get paid from two different accounts now keith no no, no. but if we separate it out will he have to get paid from two different accounts or is it still going to be one account are we going to create a new account i i don't think we would have to i think it's basically for the the personnel committee has to uh, have a rational um, kind of justification for the recommendation, okay. and uh, our rationale for uh, you know for justifying our recommendation can say, well, in our minds, we're splitting this into highway superintendent plus bonus. We get a building superintendent, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so our rationale may have that little kind of fissure in it. Um, but I don't think it has to have a corresponding accounting uh, separation. That'll come down the road. <laughs> and it's okay. The, the, you know, that's, that's under somebody else's job, not Keith's. Yeah. They'll have to come back here and ask us for more money to do more separation of Keith's salary into different buckets. What do you think, Brian? Got anything to say? <clears throat> don't worry about the counting end. We'll take care of All it. Right. <clears throat> yeah. So do we have to decide this tonight? Or has, uh, like, for example, were we to take up Keith's, I, I have to go back and now remind myself of the, the letter he wrote. Um, 
There it is. Um, do, 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 do. So if we did what we had just talked about and, and kind of mentally severed the building superintendent from the highway superintendent, um, where would we be as far as a recommendation for this year's salary? Is that one of the numbers in this letter? So I'm looking at the very last uh, paragraph. One suggestion would be to go back to FY20 when the position was changed uh, to make it 6.9% above average and keep it at that point above the current median average. So that's when the position was created, right? The current median is 67,600 adding 6.9% is adding 4,600, making it 72 to 64. So that's kind of the, the closest to what we described. I don't know if it's exactly the same thing we described, but it, the closest to it. Well, um, are we going to have another meeting? I mean, it might be worth taking a little time to get the rationale right here, if we're um, if we're thinking of doing it this way and kind of going back over the last um, few years and take a look at what if we had done this in previous years, what would salaries have been and so on. So um, yeah, I think that's a good idea. So I I would I would. Um, I don't know if I'm chairing, do I get to make motions? I'd entertain a motion along those lines. If somebody I make a motion, we delay making a decision on this until we have more data or we figure out how we're going to split this up. Second. Okay. Uh, we'll take a roll call vote. Uh, Betty? I agree with that, yes. Susan? Yep. Tommy? Yep. And uh, Keith, I'm gonna leave you out just cause you're the subject uh, and uh, Joyce, yes. So we'll put this on our agenda for next time and we'll hopefully have a little time to study it and come up with some, some better data to, to kind of understand this in. Okay, I'm ready to turn that uh, wheel back over to Keith. Okay, um, the next item on the agenda and I'll push this right probably back at Brian in regards to update on the Juneteenth holiday. Yep. Um, so after the last meeting, one of the things we wanted to look at was to try to figure out what the schools were doing. Um, and I reached out to Shelly, Shelly Parade, she's the business manager and uh, the school is not adding it as a holiday at this time. Um, so, and then I'm on a listserv for small town administrators and, and this has been a, a well, it was a, a frequent topic of conversation, but it, it's kind of cooled off now, but um, everybody's all over the map. Mm. Um, some are some are just adding it as, as a paid holiday. Some are not adding it as a paid holiday. Um, it, it's just every, everywhere. People don't really know what to do with it. The law says that that it doesn't need to be provided as a paid holiday. Um, some some unions have it depends on the language in their contracts. Some say some union contracts, but not ours, say you know employees get all mm -hmm. all paid um, all state holidays paid. So yeah, in your state holiday, the contract interpretation is hey, it's a state holiday, so we get it off. Uh, other contracts are worded differently, so. That's a long way of saying everybody's all over the map on this. I would think that even when you go back to the schools, if, if they were required to pay, they'd probably structure their school calendar so that the last day of school is just before that maybe. That's one way around it. Um, Brian, they don't do, or does anybody here know if, the school, they're like, do they get any compensation for like July 4th? I do not know. I think it's, I mean, I really think it's just, it's just rolled into their, you know, whatever their salaries are is they work for 180 days. I think it's 180. Ish. Ish. 
170 this year. Um, but it, I think it, it they're working for 180 school days. So wherever those holidays fall, it's kind of kind of how they deal with it. So I mean, even with this holiday, teachers still need to work 180 days. There still needs right. to be 180 school days per DESE regulation. So um Well, I'm the one that, you know, had brought it up to begin with, just uh, more of a conversation piece. I didn't want it to be not considered and find out that we were the, like the last ones to ever consider it. Um, I'm not suggesting <clears throat> that we jump at the at the moment and say we, we give it to our employees either. So um, mm. I just felt it was a conversation piece and just to make sure we're we're in line with the other towns, and if they're if it's not overwhelmingly being offered, then maybe we table it for the time being and see what happens in a year or two. I make a motion we table it for now. Second. Okay, I have a motion made and seconded. Any other discussion? If not, I'll do a roll call vote. Tom. Aye. Susan. Aye. Betty? Aye. Joyce? Aye. And myself, I'll go along with it, aye. Um, next item is to discuss the future work of the personnel committee. Um, one thing that just never seems to go away and that is updating the our policies and job descriptions and handbook. Um, I think we've all talked about it, it, it would be really nice if we can compile the things and get a handbook, so to speak, to hand to a new employee that comes on board and say, here's, here's our policies and, and, and so forth. And so with COVID, we had talked about doing it last year and with COVID, um, mm -hmm. it just gets pushed off. So be almost impossible to do it via zoom you, you know i mean right. i think i'd want to be sitting in a room with all the paper and hashing it out it's almost that there's a there's a general town policy but then each job or each employee has specifics to their job so hmm. you know you hate to keep pushing it off but until you can sit down and re you know, you, it's going to take a while to sit down and hash this out. Yeah. When, you know, when the schools, um, I remember back when um, I was doing uh, recordings for FCAT of school committee meetings, they had like their big policy book and this is just policies, not job descriptions. Um, but they actually had a consultant go through them and help them update it. Um, because they, you know, knew more about updates to the law and they uh, would make suggestions um, and about, you know, why this change would be beneficial or why that uh, thing you have in your policy is actually no longer legal. And, and so I, I don't know how big our person, our policy book is compared to say the one for the district, probably with the schools, there's many, many more, but they got professional help on that. And I don't know if that's something we should consider um, for this particular job, because we can sit around and hash it out. But in the end, it's, you know, what's our knowledge base within this group about what state law is and what, uh, what good policies are and what policies work. And uh, I mean, we, we have only our common sense and that doesn't always cut it when it comes to things making sense with the law. So um, I put that out there. I know it would be expensive to hire a consultant in all likelihood. Um, but I don't really know um, if it's out of reach or if that's something that we could sensibly look at, at least for policies. Uh, I have a you know, question to Brian, and that is, do you feel it, our staff could do it if they were compensated for the additional hours just for this project, so to speak. I'm not talking about making, um, adding more hours to them for a forever, but just as a, while this is being done, because I'm sure we could do it cheaper 
in-house, then we could hire an outside contractor. So, I might have a long answer. Um, if you recall, probably three or four years ago, the town had hired a consultant to do some of this work. Yep. And it was awful. It was not great. Mm. Um, okay. um, we had meeting, and, and this is, I won't say names, but this is more of a reflection of the consultant than on the process. Because I think the I, I think the process would have been right. Um, but uh, I mean, we got, we just were handed stuff that was ripped from other towns without, you know, at least change the name of the town from, from Winchester to Waitley or whatever it was. Um, well, it was a W. Yeah. <laughs> we had meetings canceled late. Like it was just, it, and we really, what we were left with is it, it was nothing that it, we just couldn't really use it. Yeah. Um, but so in, in terms of, in terms of staffing resources, we don't have a lot um and there's 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 a pretty long list of, of things that that need to get done um so i don't know it's necessarily a a, a question of money for staff it's more of a question of time um and the ability to take something on um and i'm not sure that that we have that and then there's the issue of sort of the 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 technical expertise part of it um and I'm not sure that we have that internally either. Um, so, so I, I mean, I think it, it probably th the best way and, and the fastest way for this to get done would be um, to hire a consultant. Um, a good one, though. A good one. Not a crappy um, one. I have a name that we should not use. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, but it, it is, it, it's time intensive um, unless we just want to go with, you know, scrap our old one and, and we'll take the one that just give us the, just give us Winchester's entire personnel policy and we'll, we'll go with that. Um, but I don't really necessarily want to do that either. Um, you know, I, I'm wondering if it might be something for a community compact grant. I know we have a lot of competing, we have a lot of competing priorities um, for, our, for limited grant funds. Um, but that's, it's something that, that we could look into. Um, that would be that would that would probably be the most likely source of grant funding. Um, we we could also explore um, town funds, but I mean this is something that 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 should you know that should be addressed sooner rather than later. That's a long answer. I agree. All right. So then is. It I guess then the next thing would be if we're going to look at a consultant, someone's got to put a, a dollar figure on that to bring it forth to the finance committee and or town meeting or especially maybe it, since it's not a regular budget item, it would probably be best as a, as a warrant article. Yeah, I think we'd want to explore the, um, we'd want to explore the community compact program first because yeah. I feel like the community compass best practices program. I feel like that may be an eligible, mm -hmm. um, an eligible grant activity or grant project. All right. Um, then I guess we need to have you look into that a little bit more before we can do anything more with that. Yeah. So I'll take a look between now and the, our next in the meeting. next meeting. Okay. Um, is there any other items not anticipated within 48 hours? No, if not, if I hear none, um, then I guess we would need to set the next meeting to discuss the outstanding topics. Yeah, so in terms of the schedule, the finance committee select board schedule has has the recommendations of the personnel committee going to them on April 20th. So we would have time for for one meeting. Um, and I assume that's all that you would want to do. Um, yeah. So um, and we tend to meet on Mondays 
Um, I'm not sure the 19th is the best day. <laughs> no. <laughs> and that's the, I, I feel like it's a little close, but there's the 5th and the 12th then. Before that, one of those will be Waitley 250th, though. Yeah, that's the 12th. Oh. The 12th. Um, well, can we be ready in two weeks, or would we be willing to go with the, let's just get it in under the wire 19th? I will not be here on the 5th, but you can make decisions without me. Does it have to be a Monday? Not Does as far as I'm concerned, but. <clears throat> I'm gone the 5th to the 17th, so. Oh. <laughs> well, just when they lifted the travel advisory. Yep. And I got vaccinated. So. Yay. Oh, good for you. Cool. I have to wait until I'm at the end of the line. I'm in the line Jocelyn. to get in line, though. So um, that's. Uh, so, Brian, you what, what's your schedule, Brian? Let's start with you. I got to remind myself what today is. Um, uh, I mean, the, the week of the 5th or the week of the 12th is certainly doable. The 6th is Finance Committee Select Board, and then the 14th is the Select Board meeting. So those would be out. Oh, but but Tommy's out. Yeah, those he's out, he's two out weeks, both so. of those weeks. So, so he wants hard. nothing to do with it. All right. Nope. Don't, don't do it around me. Do whatever you got to do. No. Just email um, what, what you decided. Right. And you said the next, uh, that select board is the Wednesday of the 14th. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, uh, could be Tuesday or Thursday. Thursday, it's hard for me to get there right at, oh, no, we're doing seven o'clock, not six. Or, no, we're doing six, aren't we? Six, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Thursdays don't work for me. I teach a class every Thursday night. Okay. Um, does the fifth work then? I'm sorry. About, does the fifth work? Twenty-six. Uh, okay with me. That's fine for me. Okay. Okay. Then two weeks gives us enough time. Okay. Yeah. So okay. the fifth at six p.m. Yep. Yep. I have a dentist appointment earlier. I might not be able to talk, but <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> All right. Um, if we have taken care of that, I'll entertain a motion for adjourning. Make a motion to adjourn. And second. A motion made and seconded and roll call. Tom? Aye. Betty? Yes. Susan? Yes. Joyce? Yes. And myself? Yes. Have a good night, everyone. Safe Thank travels, you. Tom. Yep. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.